have in this app is that we need to keep the keyboard on the screen at all times. Normally, when we're working with an app in Android, the operating system senses when the keyboard is required. For example, if we have a text box, if we click in the text box, the operating system knows to bring up the keyboard. But for this app, we need the keyboard installed full time on the screen. So to do this, we're going to have to change the Android manifest file. This is the manifest file that was automatically created by Android Studio. To this, we just need to add one additional item. And that's all we need to do to make sure that the keyboard stays affixed to the screen. Now we need to make some minor changes to the XML file for this app. You can see that some padding has automatically been put in. Because we're going to be working with the exact screen dimensions, we need to remove this padding. In addition, we're going to remove this text view hello world that came as a default in our app. We are going to be creating a new view for our app and I'm going to just add a couple of lines to this XML file to incorporate that view. With those changes in place, our changes to the XML file are now complete. We're now going to code the Pong view class. I've gone ahead and created an empty Pong view header and we're now going to extend this class to include the surface view class and the surface view is going to help us by allowing us to define a brand new surface for our game. We're also going to implement something called a surface holder callback We cannot start our game until the surface holder is finished building its surface and that is an asynchronous event so by implementing this interface we'll be able to get a callback function that allows us to execute only after the surface is done being built. These are the methods that are required when we implement the service holder interface. We won't be using these last two but this one is going to be important for us because this is the callback function that is called when the surface is finished being built. Right now we don't have a game thread. We're going to discuss that in the next tutorial. So I'll just put a comment in here for now that once we have the game thread created, this is where we're going to start it. You can see that our class header still has a red underline and that's because a constructor is required. We'll get to that in a minute, but let's start by defining a couple of state variables. When we add a thread variable, this is where we're going to put it. Right now, we haven't created the thread class yet. Now let's go ahead and create a constructor. And there we have our constructor which has made the header errors go away. In the constructor we're also going to load up the surface holder. The surface holder object is the one that will hold the canvas for our drawing application. It will also supply us with a bunch of tools that we can use to manipulate the canvas and the sprites that are on it. What's happening is that the surface view contains its own version of a surface holder and by using the get holder method we can get a handle to it and hold it inside of our class for easier access when we need it in the various methods. Now we need to do some additional housekeeping inside the constructor. First we need to tell the surface holder object that the class that's going to handle the callback is this class.
Next, we need to make sure that when the key is pressed on the keyboard, that we're able to handle the events that are associated with those key presses. Now let's write the method that's going to be called every time a key is pressed on the virtual keyboard. When a key gets pressed on the keyboard, this code basically describes which key it was that got pressed. There is some additional information that also comes along with this event, but we're not going to be using that in our app. Once we have the thread defined, we're going to pass the information along about this key press to the game. However, until then, we'll just set this to be returning true all the time. And that pretty much concludes all the work we need to do in the PongView class. To make use of the new PongView class, in our main activity, in the onCreate method, we've created a PongView and then moved the content view to point to that new view. These are the only changes that we need in our main activity to invoke the PongView. Mm -hmm.